my build. Um, so if you haven't seen it before, basically this build is revolved around stacking elements, and now it's using residual energy to boost my bleeding edge skill. Um, so let me just show you a little bit of gameplay real quick. We'll just run a quick 187, and then I'll kind of go into everything, the stats, passive skills, gear, etc. What do you... I'm trying to get six or seven different types of stacks. There we go, now we've got seven. So look at my bleeding edge. It does over a hundred thousand damage when I have seven stacks. Or I should say seven seven types of elements. This thing hits ridiculously hard. creation to We have a little bit of mobility with the ether jump. So many points. You can't do that. Need a few mobs. Come on, fellas, come on this way. Come on. There we go. If the boss has a lot of hit points, you can transform there and kill it, but I mean, I didn't even need it. That's under three minutes right there. I mean, this thing is just absolutely crazy. Let me kill this guy and I'll show you. Okay, so now that you've seen that, let me show you my stats just real quick. So we put everything into toughness um, because we want a nice, healthy pool of HP as well as fairly decent resist so I'll show you the resist we're sitting you know 70 to 75 percent uh, but we have a nice big pool so we don't get one shot um, which obviously is important um, so yeah I would just dump everything into toughness and we are running ev all 
heavy gear because we're trying to stack as much resist as we can. We can obviously get higher resist. Um, I've done variations where I get up to 80%, but then my health is at about 100k, um, and I still on occasion will get one shot, usually by like those butcher guys, but I find that this is kind of the sweet spot. About 75% resist, and you know, 130 plus health seems to be uh, pretty good, especially when you're running um, Dire Junction. So, uh, yeah, so let's go over the passives. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are doing an element stack with residual energy. So the typical um, tree looks like you come down here, of course, you want to be able to apply an additional stack so every spell and every attack normally will only allow you to apply one type of ailment so with this you can apply a second which this allows us to be able to get up to seven ailment stacks so this is crucial for the build um, and then speaking of so once we get all those stacks so we can get an additional five percent for every five stacks so doing the math right so if you have seven types of elements and there's up to five stacks per that's a, a total of 35 stacks and then you times that by five so that's how much additional damage that you're getting so what is that 210 percent so you're getting an extra when when I'm fully stacked up that's an additional 210 percent damage so uh, yeah this is the core of the build and then in order to do that like I said to get that many stacks you have to get the five stacks here the five stacks here and then over here five stacks and five stacks and I'll cover more about that right there but just to kind of show you that's how you get up to 30 stacks so that that's the first part of the core of the build the second part is actually over here so this is called residual energy so every time I cast a spell I gain an additional 30% damage for an attack and it's a period of time it's not oh you have to bounce back and forth meaning you don't cast one spell and then you can attack use one attack and then you have to use one spell like once I cast a spell it lasts for, I, I want to say it's about five seconds. I mean, we could actually look at it right now. So, look, I have no buffs at all. My bleeding edge is at 30,000. I will cast one spell and see how it goes up to 48,000. It's still 48,000, so several seconds have gone by. Still at 48,000. Do I have to move my mouse off of this, or will it update? Oh, okay, I guess I have to update it. So, let's try that again. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. So, you know, about 8 seconds, right? So when you're in combat, you're constantly casting spells, right? So the second that comes off the cooldown, you're already casting your next spell. So it just skyrockets. So I'm getting, uh, I can't remember what the percentage was, 30% from there, right? And then I'm bumping that up even further by using this catalyst. So this catalyst does the exact same thing. So I get 30% from the passive, and then I get 28% from this. So that's 58%, which is why that it jumps up from, in this case, 30 all the way up to 48. So if you really think about it, that's actually multiplicative. Like almost everything in this game is additive, but that is multiplicative. So that is really, really helpful. Um, that's why it's so good. And I just discovered this the other day. Um, and I've been testing it and I really, really like it. So, okay, so we'll go over some of the other stuff, right? We'll just quickly look over it. So. Because now Bleeding Edge is kind of the core of the build, instead of using Bleeding Edge as the dump, um, we're stacking melee damage instead of occult. So crit, crit damage, 
and melee. So that's kind of where we're taking all this. I already covered all this. Um, we do uh, our, our ticks, so all of our elements, when they're applied, will actually crit now. So that's a nice little bump of DPS. And again, I talked about crit. So we're getting an additional 60% on crit damage. And I'll, and I'll talk about crit chance in a minute, but you really obviously want to get high crit chance to make the most of this passive. Uh, coming over here, we're getting ailment chance. Ailment chance is gonna be particularly important. Uh, really element, elemental, excuse me, ailment chance is gonna be really important because of our chest piece, which uh, I guess I'll talk about that now. So the reason that we want elemental chance, mainly in our build, is because we're using the frost feed. So what happens is it takes all of that elemental damage, or elemental chance, excuse me, and it straight up converts it to crit chance. So you can see I have no points in ferocity. I haven't put anything. This is all just from gear, whatever, right? So I should have basically no crit chance, but I do. I have 54.9 on my weapon, and if we look at my uh, spells, 55, 55, 59, 58, so, oh, I guess I'll show you this one, uh, 55. So I basically have 55 plus percent crit chance for free because I'm running elemental crit chance. So that is really, really nice to have. Um, Okay, so coming over here, so we want health globes, and I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to the spells, but this is important to get as many health globes as we can. Uh, coming up here, this is just some resistances for some survivability, which is nice. Again, we want attack damage where we can and crit, dam or crit damage, so that's good. Uh, coming up here, I talked about this, we want to get the ailment stacks and dire junction because this prevents us from getting one shot. So when you have that, when you take that huge hit, it splits it. So instead of taking it all at once, right? So let's say you get hit for, you know, 100,000. Instead of taking all 100,000, you take 40,000. And then one second later, you would take the rest. You would take the, the, the last 60%. Now it does cut down on your overall health, but it makes it so that you can actually survive. And we have high enough health pool that this allows us to actually live. Um, time cannot heal is really, really nice. So whenever you apply stasis to an enemy, they're going to take an additional 120%. You get 100 from this and 20% from that. So after 1.5 seconds, so you start doing damage to them, right? They get stasis applied as soon as they get stasis whatever damage you're doing to them one and a half second later they're going to take 120 additional or, or they're going to take 120 percent additional damage so that's really really nice um okay coming over here so for survivor or this isn't the survivor ability sorry so this is the one that um when you start doing sacred damage when they get below 15 percent of their max health they just instantly die. And you have to take both of these because this is the one that'll do it for the champions. This will do, you know, all the, the underlings and the specialists, but you gotta take this point right here to do the same thing to the champion. So that's really, really nice. Um, coming over here, so when you start stacking mobs, every single mob that you have, they're gonna take an additional four percent or you're gonna get you're gonna do an additional four percent. So if you have 10 enemies all clumped up together in a four meter radius, you're doing an additional 40% damage. But then you take this point, it's an extra. So instead of four, it's five. So same thing. So 10 mobs all clumped together, you're doing an additional 50%. So that's really nice. Now, I find that I really, really like a lot of life leech. Um, I'm taking life leech on my weapon plus this because you know, even though I have um, 135,000 health and I've got about 75% resist, um, these 187s, especially the untainted and all that, they can hit very, very, very hard. And so 
when I start taking, you know, huge dips in my health, I want it to immediately pop back up in case, you know, I get two untainteds on me or I have a huge pack of mobs and I get CC'd or some other thing. I, I want to be able to do, or I want to be able to heal, like, even if my, my dots, right? So let's say I've got a bunch of AoEs down, all my damage over time is being applied. I can still heal even when I'm being CC'd. So when the underlings, you know, they pick you up and they body slam you and it takes like, that's like a three second animation. You're like three seconds, you can't use your character. I can sit there and heal because my dots are still doing damage from the life leech. Um, so I, I really like that. Plus it's really easy, right? Because it's along the way, it's one point and I really like it. Um, this, so the more rage you have, the more damage you're gonna do. Um, so that's why you can kind of get some when, when you're testing it's a little bit inconsistent as far as like the numbers that you're looking at and that's because you want to try to have full rage right so you're just spamming your spells as fast as possible so that you're trying to keep your rage as high as you can because the higher your rage is the more damage you, you're gonna do so that that's pretty nice I like that one um, okay and now coming over here so I just started doing this as well, and this is literally, I had to spend four points to literally get poisoned because I was, I've been consistently running about five ailments for pretty much since I started playing this build, right, which is basically the entire time this game has been out. I have on occasion been able to get six stacks, but I've never been able to get seven consistently. And so this is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm getting poisoned. I'm not getting it from a skill for, or from a spell because every time I have it, like I, I used to have it on Plague Burst, right? And it tells you that it's poison. It's poison and something else. But what happens is, is you get the stack from something else and then that applies and overtakes the poison on that spell and it gives it something else. So. When, when you have no buffs applied, as an example, let's say it's poison and burn on Plague Burst, and then you're in combat, you kill an enemy, and all of a sudden uh, you get the stasis stacks, and it'll change your Plague Burst from what was poison and burn to now stasis and burn. So then you're, you're actually not getting any of those stacks. That, that, uh, and I don't really understand exactly why that happens other than I know it does so this is the only way that I could guarantee that I get poison so every two seconds enemies in a seven meter radius gain a poison stack which seven meters is a pretty big range so um, it's pretty easy to get really I'm concerned about getting my my five stacks right because as I mentioned we want five stacks of every type of element because that's what a mortal offering does. That boosts our damage by 210% if you have all seven elements, five stacks. So that's why we're kind of synergizing. All, the, all these nodes are synergizing with each other. Um, and then coming over here, so we take this. So enemies that are impaired, which is stasis, right? So of course, we're applying every element, so they also have stasis, so that's just a free extra 25%, so that's really nice. And again, survivability. So we are taking elevated gain just so that our helmet will give us double resistance. So I'll show you my helmet here in a second, but it's basically 700 and whatever, 750 resists. So that 750 resists is actually now 1500 resists from one piece of gear now i could also put a, a chest on there but i'm using the frost weave as i explained earlier um, but if i was not using the frost weave or if you don't have a frost weave put a heavy chest on with as much resistance as you can and that resistance is going to get doubled which is awesome and then coming over here, uh, this is the other cool thing. So I basically, you kind of saw, like, when I'm not teleporting from mob to mob, I'm literally standing still because I'll stack all the enemies. I'll stand right next to them. So I'm getting um, extra damage from that. So if you saw those kind of, uh, 
you know, they're, they're the same thing as tenant points, right? But these are called inex in a inexorable. Oh, geez, I can't even say inexorable points. Whatever, right? Tenable points, we'll call them. And you can get up to ten, and every single one of those points gives me six percent damage. So you can have up to sixty percent damage just from standing still and just hitting on the mobs. Um, plus you're getting resists, which is always nice. That was the other thing. So um, very, very nice to have. And again, because we, you saw I stack everything up, and I think I mentioned this, you know, we're getting the bestial frenzy, so we're doing more damage. So you can see everything on here stacks up. So the whole goal is to stack everything up use an anomaly and then plague burst honestly is basically just for a little bit of additional damage um, drops tier on them again a little bit more damage we're getting actually um, well let me show you I'll, I'll go through the spells it'll make more sense and we'll do it that way so here's anomaly this is pretty much the only way to run anomaly in my opinion because you want the anomaly as big area as possible you want to be able to cast two of them you want to be able to pull them in multiple times so it's basically keeping them in the anomaly and CCing them so when they're CC they're not actually hitting you so that's also kind of a form of tank and then globe so you mentioned I, I, I mentioned it that in my passive tree that I'm creating globes um, plague verse also creates globes as well as tier creates globes so what happens is is all these health globes are all over the floor they start getting pulled into this vortex and it does damage to them which is really really nice and then of course increasing the vortex duration so my cooldown is 7.1 seconds and this lasts for six so i almost can permanently keep anomaly up which is pretty cool um, the plague burst uh, so what's cool about this is that this this will allow you to create more health globes this increases the chance for health globes to drop which again synergizes with anomaly a uh, little bit of extra chance to apply ailment stacks crit damage increase the explosion damage so when they is explode right so th this one's crucial because they have so many ailment stacks on all these monsters, right? And so when they explode, this is going to increase that damage. And it's only one point, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this one's pretty good. I don't know how well this works. I'm sure it does some damage. I don't know. There's not really anything else better to take. Increase our effect, so that's cool. Um, we want to convert this instead of just a single drop. We want to make it so that it's damage over time. Uh, reduce the cooldown, crit chance, extra damage, cooldown, damage, and damage. And I have to do this one too, especially because I'm trying to dump my willpower because, as I mentioned, we want our rage high. So the, by having these things cost more, that's actually a good thing, right? So that's fine. Um, now, I recently started using this. And the reason that I'm using this, well, where's the, okay. Ah, here it is. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Pretty much the only reason I'm taking this is so that I can inflict weakness and shock. So this, this one is honestly how I'm getting both of these, weakness and shock. I'm, I'm getting it from this. So you just jump on them, you, you apply weakness and shock. That's basically it little bit of damage okay that's all right charges faster and does more damage so but the real reason to take this is to inflict weakness and shock and of course either jump to get me around um, so you can do t two versions of this uh, you can either run like cooldown and teleport range um, if you have a lot of cooldown in your builds you can see I've got this down to a one second cooldown so and my movement speed is increased after I come out of the teleport. So this way is almost as fast moving around the map as using this, where you just basically can permacast this. The only problem with this is you're going to eventually run out of willpower 
you have to stop, you're going to have to cast Bleeding Edge to kind of dump it, and then you're going to be able to continue on. So if you're going long distances, this is more consistent. So that's kind of why I personally run it that way. Uh, but this is just to get around the map. Uh, and of course, Bleeding Edge. So everything that we have done up to this point, getting the stacks and using the residual energy, is all to make my Bleeding Edge do more damage. As I showed earlier, I think it, I got it up to like 90 something, maybe even 100,000, uh, uh, which is crazy, right? Because it starts at 30, which is that alone is pretty good, right? Like 30,000 is no slouch. But we can get this up to 100,000 just by applying the stacks and casting a spell. So that's pretty crazy. Um, so projectile speed goes faster, increase the damage, increase the crit damage. <coughs> The axe as I move. Uh, that's okay. And I think I'm mainly doing that because it keeps it up longer. Yeah, it, like it spins around longer. Yeah, that's why I take that. Um, and increase the damage per helmet stack. So again, th this is this is crucial because you know you're talking seven different ailments. You know, thirty stacks each. So up to like 210 ailment stacks total and then you're going to increase damage per ailment stack like that's going to scale really really well so that's very very important and you see our crit damage is no slouch either 424 percent at a you know over a 50 percent chance of it doing that so yeah we're critting a lot and, you, and in the gameplay you probably saw how much i was critting it's just like full of yellow that's all you're seeing is just tons and tons of crit damage numbers so this thing is pretty sweet um let's see i'm trying to think if i missed anything oh yeah gear let me show you the gear so this took a long time and by no means am i even close to being done but i'm at a very very comfortable spot as you can tell where i'm pretty happy with the gear now it's just starting to squeak out the the last little bits and uh, trying to make it just slightly better so i'll start with pretty much head to toe so i mentioned this a little bit earlier so my helmet yeah 747 resist so that passive basically doubles this so from this one piece of gear i'm getting almost 1500 resists out of it plus i have 38 percent cooldown on it and 37 percent material damage which is fantastic um, the resource generation is totally wasted um, but i'm afraid to re-roll anything off of this because if i lose anything else this basically becomes junk and i've never seen a helmet rolled that high as far as resistance so i'm leaving it as is um, the wisdom is fine ideally it would have been toughness but wisdom is fine too because if you know anything about wisdom that is going to give you ailment chance right and as we already talked about ailment chance gets converted to crit chance so it allows us to not only apply our stacks more frequently but it allows every single hit or i shouldn't say every single crit uh, or you have a greater chance to do crits, I should say, right? Because your crit chance goes up. So um, wisdom is fine on there, but in an ideal world, that's toughness. And then maybe like a health roll or, or something else on there instead of resource generation. But this is pretty freaking good. Um, I talked about this. Everybody should know about the trial belt. Um, that, that's pretty much a no-brainer to inflict the mark of impurity. I mean, this is how we get our curse stacks on everything. Um, I can show you how I take it, because some people actually, I'm surprised, do it a little bit different. Uh, yeah, there we go. Mark of impurity. So I just run it straight down here, so um, make it a more vulnerable to damage. This is how you get your curse stacks, right? So if I was getting them off of something else, I, I, I guess I could take this off, but this is like a guaranteed way for me to get 10 stacks instantly and you know have and then have it spread as soon as um, one of the enemies dies right so that's pretty nice 
Um, and then enemies, when they're killed, they explode and they do damage based off of target's max health. So this is why, like, when uh, specialists or champions die, anything that's standing right next to them dies with it because they obviously have very high health pools. And I don't know what the exact percentage is, but it's high. It, it's it's probably over 50% of their health. So if you had 100, and, and that's a guess, right? I, I don't really know, but just looking at the end of some of these runs and you're like, oh, wow, I did 70 million. You know, how did I do 70 million in one hit? Well, it, it's because of this, right? So that monster that has, or excuse me, not monster, the champion who has 100 and something million hit points when you kill him and he explodes, that's what's registering, is this right here. So um, that's how I run it. I've seen people um, taking things off, like they might take this off and then run you know, more vulnerable there, more vulnerable there. I think that's kind of the other way I've seen it run, but I need this so that I can guarantee so I can get my seven stacks because that's how it all synergizes. So that's how I run it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the rest of the gear. <clears throat> okay, so pants. Again, I'm running damage on everything I can. I And I've been straight up percent damage. Like this one has 25% damage. That's fine, but ideally it would be material damage. Um, the, the percentage damage is going to affect my spells and attacks but you can get a higher percentage if you like material you can get I think up to like 45 percent um, so I do a little bit less on some of these spells or excuse me all these spells like a little bit but I would gain a lot on here and everything is kind of going bleeding edge this is my main source of damage so I want to skyrocket to as high as I can so once I get everything fully converted from percent damage and oculate damage to material damage, my DPS is going to go even higher. But um, you really want cooldown here on the pants as well as the helmet. Those are kind of your two main ways of getting cooldown. So I got pretty nice rolls on those. Um, we want toughness everywhere, so we really want material damage, cooldown where we can, which would be the helmet and the pants and you want to get toughness on all of these and obviously resist. Um, the boots, again, uh, right now I have percent damage. I'll eventually get some material damage on it. The 830 max health scales really well. I think right now for every thousand health I put on, it, it gives me like about 8,000 back uh, because of how all my passive tree is and skills and everything built out. So. <laughs> the uh, the flat health, as we'll call it, scale right now is scaling quite nicely. That's how I'm able to get 135 percent, or excuse me, 135,000 health in my build. So that's pretty cool. Shoulders. So this one does have material damage and rage and willpower cost decrease. Um, there's not really much else to get on the. Or something side, so rage and willpower cost is pretty good to get. Uh, I really I don't care about health regeneration or ferocity. Um, if, if those were rolled off, this would be even better. But for now, it's the best I got. Um, same thing over here. So that 984 max health that scales really nice. I mean that alone is worth, like I said, for my current build about 8,000 um, in my total health pool. So that's pretty cool. Rings, I really need to get better rings. So um, I used to obviously focus everything on spells. So you're going to see my rings, you know, are focused on spell damage. Once I start changing this out to attacks, I mean, I'm already doing 100,000 on this. I can't wait to see how high I can push this thing. I bet you I can, if I really refine this, I bet you I can get this thing up to 150,000. So not only do I need, like, uh, triple flat attacks, but instead of elemental damage, get like material damage. And then I also, you can get the same thing on here, right? Where it says attacks gain 28% from the last spell cast. You can actually roll that onto rings. Um, 
it's, it's obviously a lot lower percentage. I think it's probably between like 10 and 15. But if I got, you know, 10 and 15 on each ring, remember that's multiplicative. So let's just say I get it on both my rings and between the two rings, I get an additional 25%. With that alone, I could push bleeding edge from 100,000 to 125,000 if all things were equal, right? And I literally changed out just that. And then if I start getting everything converted over to flat attack damage on both these rings and, you know, all these percent damage to material damage, I mean, I, I don't think it's unrealistic that I can get this up to 150,000. Um, but we'll see. And I do have a, a good dagger, so let me talk about the dagger real quick. I know this video is probably getting pretty long, so let me wrap this up. But the dagger, the these are really hard to craft. I crafted this one. It took me a really long time. Um, but you want life leech, as I mentioned, right? Because even though we have a lot of resists and a lot of health, like you just need to stay topped off. Because uh, th these things hit hard at 187, so you really want some life leech. And preferably if you can just get it from the weapon. If not, you know, if you get it from physical rend or toxic i mean that's something but if you get it from the weapon then every bit of damage you do uh, you get five percent of the damage back into health so that's really nice and i got a really good roll on this 30 percent crit damage which is max and then 299 percent element damage so the majority so that we'll, we'll call it 300 percent that 300 percent elemental damage is being directly converted using the chest into crit chance. So it takes 300% ailment and it also makes it 300% crit chance. So that's why even though I have like no ferocity that I'm able, so like right now, right? So if I didn't have this chest, I would only do 21% crit damage, but I'm actually doing 55. So I'm gaining, you know, 30 something percent almost exclusively from having that 300% elemental damage. I think I have some elemental damage on one of the rings or something somewhere, but it's really small. Maybe it's the amulet. I don't know. But regardless, right, so you really want elemental element chance on the weapon. Um, I don't think I talked about the, element, the amulet. So amulet, again, I need to convert everything over to flat attack damage, but this thing's pretty good. Um, I mean, it's got four types of damage, plus it's got ailments, two ailment stacks, so this is really, really solid. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anything better, but for now, it's really, really nice. Uh, yeah, so I think I talked about everything. I know this is a little bit long-winded, but I wanted to go into detail and explain my thought process and how everything synergizes so when you're actually seeing the gameplay and like well how does that actually work right and then when you start putting your build together um, it'll make more sense right so like as you start getting better gear it's like oh, okay i want to look for these attributes and this and that so i hope this is helpful um, if you like this build uh, give it a thumbs up and let me know how your build is coming along thanks